Okay, so I'm here with Amrin Williams. Uh, Amrin works for DHP Family, which is a music content promoter based in Nottingham in the lace market. Um, so I'm going to be talking through some um, questions that I know students have been uh, keen to, to know about from people that work in the industry. Um, so I'm just going to um, start off with a nice, a nice easy one for you, Amrin. So what's your job title or job role uh, and what does that involve? Hi, um, so my job title is marketing manager. Um, the role is mostly based around concept marketing, so um, promoting shows uh, that we have across the country and we promote shows nationally. Um, so that would include doing local marketing, such as ordering posters and flyers, print distribution runs um, and national marketing such as advertising nationally in um, big newspapers like The Guardian um, but crucially it involves a lot of digital marketing and um, obviously concerts, live music shows um, are a very broad have a very broad appeal so um, we often try to target people with digital ads who have lots of different interests so whether that's for a big indie band like Catfish and the Bottlemen um, we would have a very specific audience for that so lots of like younger audience people who are interested in sort of chart indie music um, and then we also do shows with artists like Lionel Richie. So um, in those cases, we're looking to target a sort of an older demographic, perhaps, um, more interested in classic pop, classic music, 80s music. Um, and platforms like Facebook and Instagram are the perfect way to be able to reach those audiences. We can tailor the content specifically to the individuals. Um, and target it really narrowed down, even down to what sort of artists they listen to themselves, what their age is. Literally, you could target just 40 year olds if you wanted. So it's it's um, definitely the best way to get a decent return on investment because you can just tailor it so perfectly for your needs. Um, whereas perhaps with posters and flyers, they are obviously brilliant and we would never do a show and not have posters and fly about um, but you don't necessarily know if it's getting to the right people you can say for instance you've got an indie band playing a show at rock city in the city centre and um, you'd obviously put posters in there and you're probably going to hit a lot of the right people because if they're already in rock city chances are they're probably interested in that kind of music mm -hmm. but you don't know for sure and it's just yeah it's a lot easier to target on on digital marketing okay that's really interesting so i mean just the as an aside there because it sounds really interesting can you tell me about some of the uh, big artists or, or sort of exciting ones that you've enjoyed working with so far just to give the students a bit of an idea of the sort of the size of the you know the musicians that you've been working with really yeah so um as i mentioned we work with catfish and the bottom men we've got a show with Lionel Richie that's due to take place June 2021, so next summer at yeah, time of yeah, recording, yeah, yeah. Uh, over um, on the embankment field um, just outside of the city centre. Um, so that's been quite exciting to work on because it's obviously a big outdoor event. Um, we also work with James Blunt, um, so that's sort of classic 90s noughties pop vibes um, we work with a lot of up-and-coming artists um, people who have ended up being big later on we work with Ed Sheeran um, I'm currently working with bands like Easy Life Sports Team um, bands that are making big moves at the minute and look set to be having lots of big things ahead for them in the future. Yeah. 
bands that I hear a lot on the radio recently as well, if that's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a very wide range. We have lots of different promoters who book different sorts of shows. We've got like heavy metal shows that we work on, um, rock, just standard rock sort of shows, indie rock, a few pop artists like obviously Ed Sheeran, um, then also a few like country music, folk music. It's a pretty broad spectrum, which is again coming back to digital marketing, why it's so good to know how to do that because in the same like couple of hours of an afternoon you could be working on catfish in the bottom and then the next minute you're working on Dave House or Brian Fallon who are a bit of a different audience entirely and then later on that day you're working on Lionel Richie or James Blunt or the Human League um, so it's just the best way to sort of reach all of those audiences. Right okay so so can you tell us a little bit more than about the company itself and sort of how you fit into it and how the how the business operates? Yeah sure um, so DHP we are a national promoter so we promote shows with artists both here in Nottingham, um, as well as further afield. We do a lot of shows in London, Manchester and Bristol in particular, but we also have shows all across the world, across the country, like Newcastle, Leeds, um, even a few in Scotland. Um, so we're pretty far reaching. Um, we also, own and operate several venues in that in particular we have quite a few so we've got rock city rest rooms stealth and the bodega so we own those venues manage those venues um, and all of the club nights that you see going on in those spaces are usually dhp related there's some um, there that i'm sure that the, some of the students will be familiar with as well in nottingham if they, if they ever go to those or anything that's yeah I'm sure um so we do that we also run a couple of festivals so we run dot to dot festival which coming back to what i was saying previously about um promoting upcoming bands emerging talent and um, that's sort of the whole ethos of dot to dot um we take a lineup of artists most of them are artists that are brand new or just on the cusp of becoming bigger um, and take them around to Manchester, Bristol and Nottingham to do like a little one day metropolitan festival across pretty much all of the venues in each city. Um, so that's really fun. Um, I'm sure some of the students have probably heard that before. Um, we also promote uh, Nottingham's biggest festival which is Splendor Festival which happens at Wilson Park and um, that's a bit of a different vibe it's more sort of a mix of older bands that are going to appeal to mum and dad and then some more new bands new artists that appeal to the younger generations of the family it's a family festival really at its heart um, and yeah we book artists to appeal across the board really, across the whole family. Um, recently, um, while the coronavirus pandemic has been on, we've been trying to come up with different innovative ways to host live music, um, as it has been obviously very difficult to run a gig with the socially distancing measures in place. So, um, in the last month or so, we have put on a local live music event and shows with Frank Turner at the Arboretum um, on the bandstand there. Um, so that was a, a big change in terms of what we'd normally do because of the social distancing measures in place. Um, but it was really interesting to have the challenge of marketing something like that 
Um, and it was great to be able to bring live music back to Nottingham after it had been away for several months. Um, and yeah. hopefully, long may it continue. We will then um, find ways to keep promoting through the pandemic. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, so can you talk us through a typical day that in your working life perhaps might be worth talking a little bit about what it would be like if you were in the office and kind of how it has been working from home as well, just briefly if you can? Sure, so my normal job life would involve um, so a lot of marketing for concerts and tours. Um, so as I mentioned before, uh, ordering print posters and flyers for venues and um, lots of print distribution etc for um, shows around the country setting up and monitoring the online ads that I mentioned and overall creating marketing plans for those shows um, also I do a lot of national marketing so when we've got a full tour a whole run of dates across the country and um, we also focus on doing some more marketing on a national scale rather than just pinpointing locally so that would involve things like as i mentioned before adverts in newspapers as well as digital ads that are like further, spread further afield targeting wise um, also, um, we sometimes look at radio ads, particularly when we've got national marketing going on um, and for bigger shows. Um, so I would be looking into that. I also um, look after the marketing for Dot to Dot Festival. So on that front, I um, basically manage a small, smaller division of the marketing team in doing all the marketing activities around Dr. Stop Festival. So um, again, setting up digital ads, making sure there's posters out, um, and then on site, on the day, looking after communications and um, customer service, I guess you'd call it, and responding to queries that come in through our social media channels mm -hmm. and being on site and available throughout the day um, at all three dates of Dr. Stop. Um, I also help out with marketing for our Beat the Streets Festival, okay. which is a festival that we recently launched a few years ago now, um, that is run solely to raise money for homeless people in Nottingham. Um, so I kind of have a similar role for that, for Dot to Dot, um, but working with a wider team um, to look after the marketing and um, work on the day making sure all customer inquiries are meant and um, responded to and everyone is happy and knows what's going on um i also spend some of my time working on our women in music um project so that's a campaign we have to um to help promote getting more women into working in the music industry so under the Women in Music banner, we have hosted several events, um, panel discussions, um, et cetera, things like that, to help promote gender equality in the music industry. Um, in my role, I help to organise those events, um, help with um, helping the panellists when they arrive, hosting um, panels on the night, yep. helping to write the programmes, stuff like that. Um, I also am responsible for managing a member of staff, um, so looking after their needs and helping them with their personal development and growth. And as a manager, I work very closely with our head of department to um, just help with the overall running of the team, so implementing new ideas and processes. Um, helping to figure out new initiatives, finding new market opportunities, um, organising training for the team. Um, and aside from that, I also manage our work experience team. Um, so, yeah, 
getting people in to do work experience and um, yeah, making sure that they have a beneficial time while they're with us and that they leave feeling like they've learned something and they can take it away. Yeah, I'm sure that's something we'll be able to discuss uh, in the future as well. So can you just tell us then a bit personally about um, sort of your route or your journey into, you know, the, into the, the role that you've got now, how you got there and um, sort of what you've done in the past? Um, yeah, sure. So I um, grew up in Leamington Spa, which is in the West Midlands. Um, I have always been interested in music. I started going to gigs and festivals from quite a young age with my mum and then with my dad later on. Um, mum when I was going for like the pop gigs busted and blue and then my dad when I started getting more into rock music and indie music. Um, I studied English, maths and science obviously at GCSE. Um, also did French art, drama, IT. Um, then for my A levels, after not really doing any music up to that point, I took on a B tech in music and um, also did that alongside my A levels in English, drama, and biology. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I've always had like a very keen interest in music, but when I got to sixth form, that was when I really started to sort of pursue it on a sort of qualification level. Um, so yeah, I got really into learning guitar, writing music, um, writing my own songs and playing, playing music, performing, singing at school concerts and things like that. Um, after sixth form, I moved to Nottingham in 2010 to study at Nottingham Trent. Um, I studied media with popular culture. Um, not really anything to do with music specifically, but because it was media as an, like an overarching theme and obviously popular culture, I was able to work music into a lot of the essays and projects that I was working on. So yeah. in particular, I wrote my dissertation on exploring female singer-songwriters and how they represent women positively through their music and just their existence really being free from sort of male interference in their processes and, and their writing. Um, but also while I was at uni, I joined the Music Society. Um, I got even more into writing music and um, performing at open mic nights across Nottingham, getting my own gigs eventually. Um, and just got really involved with the local music scene, even promoting some of my own gigs occasionally okay. um so yeah just got really really into music it was like definitely my whole sort of my main focus in life aside from studies which are important um and eventually obviously graduated got a 2-1 and got my first job which was as a social media communications assistant at, at the university as a graduate internship. Um, so I did that for just under a year and then um, a job came up at DHP, which was a marketing assistant job. Um, obviously by that point, I only had about nine months experience of doing an actual marketing job yeah. um, and, and in that job it was social media so it was very digital media focused but i am um, yeah i didn't really have any experience to my name but my passion for music was really demonstrable through all of the stuff i've done in my spare time all of the work i've done at uni where i've pushed music as my agenda um all of the gigs local music promotions that i've been doing that was what really stood me apart from other candidates, I've, yeah, I've been told. So, so from the sounds of what you're saying, <clears throat> to a degree almost, that you know, the, the courses you'd studied in the past, obviously while they are, uh, you know, really important, you would say that pushing your, you know, your real passion for the, for the subject matter or the industry that you want to work in is almost just as important, you would say. I would definitely say that that is the case. I, um, 
I'd say being able to demonstrate a passion for the industry you're looking at is so important. Um, obviously, I have mentioned how much I love music several times and mentioned that I write my own music and perform and um, yeah, like obviously everyone that loves performing music thinks I want to be a singer, I want to be in a band, I want to I want that to be my career that that's a very small minority of people that actually become famous singers or like yeah. in sustainable music projects that they can actually live off and use that as their livelihood but when you've got all of these skills that you're learning at college right now you can take those skills apply them to what you're passionate about and that's something that's going to really stand you apart from other people. If you can demonstrate you've got the skills, you've learned the skills, but you've also got the passion, whether that's music, sport, anything, um, fashion. If you can show that you've got the passion as well as the skills, then that's going to make you stand out above everyone else. Okay. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's interesting to hear that. I think that's something that you get quite often from people at work sort of in the creative industries is as you say it's about being able to sort of sell what you're good at your passions and it's you know not necessarily always super important you know what subjects you studied at GCSE for example so that's really interesting to hear I'm sure some of the students will be will be sort of interested to hear that okay yeah, so then when, when we're recruiting um one of the main things we look at is how if people have a genuine interest in music because yep. that to us is so much more important than well it's not it's not more important than the skills because you do need the skills you do you do need the know-how you can't just waltz into a marketing job but we find it really really important to work with people that have a genuine love and interest in live music in particular yeah it makes sense okay then so on that then, would you, would you say there are any particular sort of major tips you'd give to anybody that's looking to sort of pursue a, a, you know, a career in your field? Is there anything in particular that, that students should be doing or not doing? Or, you know, I'm sure a lot of students at the moment will be thinking about the courses they're on, the things that they're studying, the projects that they're doing and thinking, you know, am I on the right track here? You know, the things that maybe I should be looking to sort of go towards or not spend as much time on? Yeah, so as, as I mentioned already, definitely, I, I've given several talks before and the, the main one I always go on about is making sure that you can demonstrate how passionate you are, particularly in your applications and if you get interviews, definitely drill at home in your interviews. Yeah. Um, every industry has people behind the scenes in marketing, design, other sort of media and creative roles. So. If you've got those skills, you just need to have the passion to stand out. And obviously, if you're passionate about marketing and design and the creative industry that you're pursuing as well, then wow, that's amazing. You're an ideal candidate. Um, but aside from that, one thing I um, forgot to mention previously, um, I did a lot of freelance work and volunteering as well, um, just, um, just to sort of get my skills up. Um, so that was sort of promoting gigs, um, graphic design freelance work, um, some marketing freelance work. Yeah. So another big piece of advice I would give is create your own opportunities, gain those experiences wherever you can, um, whether that's through work experience placements or just teaching yourself and practicing new skills. Um, so digital marketing wise, um, I'm sure a lot of the students that are studying digital marketing are already aware, but Facebook have a training platform called Blueprint. It's free to access. If you've got a Facebook account, you can access it. Okay. It's got training in every single element of Facebook and social media in general. It's not just about setting up the ads. It's about the whole lot, like setting up a group. Stuff that you'll already know how to do because you're a, you're a Facebook user and you've used Facebook for your whole adult life. Um, but that is so important. Developing those skills, practicing them. You can get free training on Google as well. Google 
to do Google Ads and Google Analytics. Um, how so how would students, ju just to touch on that, so you mentioned Blueprint and the Google training, how would students um, look to access those for any that don't know about it? Um, Facebook, Blueprint, um, I'm not sure on what the exact URL is, obviously, off the top of my head, but I will find those links and I'll send them to you so you can include them in the description of the video, if that works for you. Search for that, that would be easy enough to find. Yeah, I think if you just Google them, you can probably. Okay. If Facebook Blueprint and Google Training, um, they're relatively easy to find and free to access. So definitely worth looking into, um, particularly in 2020 while we're all stuck inside with nothing else to do. Um, so yeah, practicing those skills, teaching yourself new skills, offering up your services for free occasionally, doing some work experience, doing some freelance work. Um, for arts and creative jobs, yeah, you will have to be prepared to volunteer and intern to gain the valuable experience that will eventually land you a job. Um, having an experience to get into creative jobs can be really important. So be available and ready and prepared to take those unpaid positions to get the work experience. And obviously, the college itself has a great work experience program. So make sure you take advantage of that and actually seek out a placement that's going to be relevant to what you want to do. Um, I know when I was at when I was in school, I had to do work experience, and I didn't bother to find anything, and ended up just doing a week's work experience in my dad's office, which was like completely irrelevant to anything I wanted to do, completely irrelevant to anything I'm doing now. So just make the extra effort to find something that's going to actually benefit you in the long term. If you've got the opportunity, then it's definitely something you should grab with both hands. Um, and overall, just be patient and don't give up. Um, getting jobs in the creative industry can be difficult, but if you get all the right experience and find your passion, it's definitely going to help you. Um, I don't know it can be hard, but um, yeah, don't give up. Yeah, it's a great message there as well. And I think that's something worth bearing in mind, I think, for students um, on these courses is, you know, if you can, obviously, we, we bring on the placements that we can. But if you're able to, you know, source your own at the moment, um, especially, you know, if you don't feel um, shy about approaching companies, you know, we will support you with that. And as Lamwin said there, you can find something that's relevant or you feel, you know, that you've got a certain passion for. That's definitely helpful as well. So it's good to be able to show that you've gone that extra mile and, and arrange that yourself. So, so that's something definitely worth looking into. I would definitely encourage students to do that. OK, so, so just finally then, really, as we get to the end of this, um, is there anything that you wish you'd done differently so far in your career? Um, you know, if, if you could do it differently, sort of how, how would you do so? That's a good question. Um, as I mentioned, I would definitely go back in time to year 10 at school and do a work experience that was more relevant to what my life is now. Um, but apart from that, I think I definitely could have spent more time when I was at university focusing on the actual university work and maybe a lot of other people would see that as something they would want to go back in time and do differently. Like I did get a very high 2-1 and perhaps if I'd have pushed myself harder I could have got first. Okay. But I kind of feel like ultimately the time that I wasn't spending on my like writing my dissertation or writing my essays I was spending on music and ultimately that's what has helped me to get into a career in music which is what I wanted mm. so it's still a good experience yeah yeah so I I'd maybe try and balance them a bit better but um I would definitely say make sure you do both right if you go to university make sure you you spend some time developing yourself as well as um doing all the uni work the essays the exams the revision 
that's a good message, I think, even for, you know, at college and at university, if you do go there, is, yeah, obviously about having a balance. Um, and I think that'll stand you in good stead as well going forward, because obviously, as you then come to actually have a job, there's a lot said these days about work-life balance as well. So everything can't be work all the time. Obviously, it's really important to put that, that you know, that side in. But I think, as you say, developing yourself as a person and making sure you're happy and balanced is, is you know, is a big thing as well. So that's definitely good advice. Um, so, yeah, so, I, you know, I think... Um, Definitely some good tips and advice there, some really interesting experience to hear for our students. Um, is there anything sort of finally that you'd want to add really that you feel like we've not covered or that you think would be useful for students to hear? Um, I think we've probably covered everything. I think, as I said, the main message I can pass on is just keep trying. If you want a job in the creative industries in particular, just because you're not going to be, well, you might end up being a, the singer at the front of the stage, but there are so many roles behind the scenes in every industry, not just music. Um, think about theatre. Obviously, the actors are front and centre stage, but there's so many people behind um, costume makers, makeup artists. Um, marketing, production staff, people that work in like selling the tickets. There's so many roles behind the scenes in the creative industries that if you really want to find a route for yourself, you can carve one out. Okay, great. So, I mean, obviously, in terms of the company, uh, if you're interested in looking into them, um, you can find them online. Um, I think it's www.dhpfamily.com. Um, obviously, they're on Facebook and Instagram um, and Twitter, so you can have a look at everything that they're doing at the moment. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, if you're interested in, in this sort of industry, obviously, you can speak to your um, work placement achievement coach, uh, Emma Blomfield, and she'll be able to tell you a bit more. If you've got any follow-up questions from the back of this that you'd like me to ask Amwin or anyone at the company, obviously, feel free to get in touch and we can maybe do a follow-up at some point as well. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much for your time, Amwin, and I uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon at some point, maybe. Yeah. Okay, take care.